All right, so to get this started, underappreciated streetwear brands or brands that you should know about in 2020, this will be episode like seven or eight. I've done a lot of these in this year alone. Um, I got re-inspired to start it up again because some people had sent me their brands and also I saw Kyron's episode, so shout out to Kyron. Uh, he did a great uh, two or three episodes. I'm not sure how many he did exactly now. Um, but I got re-inspired. I'm like, you know what? I should continue the series and talk about some of the brands that I've kind of gathered up over the months uh, and talk about it on the channel. So with that said, it's your boy Keezy. It ain't easy being Keezy. Let's get it. All right, the first brand that we got up is called Stuff Supermarket. I ran across this pretty randomly on Instagram on search feed and then also someone had also had sent it to me a while ago. I'm putting it first because a very good example of a brand that will automatically catch your attention. And after it did catch my attention, I was kind of looking through the page and it has a lot of Asian uh, influence or Asian inspired uh, type of garments and also just the marketing that's behind it. But I don't think they're from Asia because on their bio it says it's from Spain. And if you look at the comments, a lot of the comments are actually in Spanish and they're not uh, like an Asian dialect. And just kind of going back to what I said about grabbing your attention, you got to go on their page. You got to go on their page and, and watch the videos. I'm not saying skip everything else, but go straight to any of the posts that they make that are videos because some of them are like half hilarious. It's like a very tongue in cheek way of presenting clothing or in this case, streetwear in a very unique way too i don't know anybody else off the top of my head like the only thing that this reminds me of stuff supermarket what it reminds me of is johnny cupcakes like i mean i don't know if johnny cupcakes is still around right now but back then the way johnny cupcakes was presented was that it was like you walked into a cupcake store and instead of cupcakes inside the glass he would actually have t-shirts of whatever type of graphic that has to deal with the theme of a cupcake place but it's johnny cupcakes but in this case it takes more of the vibe of if anyone has ever been to Asia, Japan, China, Hong Kong, or Singapore, or anything like that, when you go to their 7-Elevens or whatever their other convenience stores are called, they got thousands and thousands of snacks and they just have a lot of stuff inside of their supermarkets. And that's what this is kind of catching the theme and the vibe of, and they're being very consistent with it. And I thought it was a good idea to kind of put it first on the list, especially if you own your own brand and you're trying to branch out and do different ideas and take different things. In this, in this scenario, they're doing a very good job with the video side of it to catch attention. It definitely caught my attention enough to mention it first on the channel. So anyways, check them out. Stuff Supermarket, when really with all those S's, it kind of, <laughs> it kind of has like a, like a, like an Asian accent or like a Japanese accent. It would be like Stofu. <laughs> anyways, just watch the videos. The videos are funny. The videos are funny. Go check it out. Um, let, let's move on. All right, so this next one I'm, I'm pretty excited to talk about because um, I've actually chatted with the guy uh, and it's going to be called Lord Fubu. Maybe I'm a little biased for putting him on the list because I've, I've chatted with him and whatever, but I actually encountered um, him on YouTube first because before I got my Fugazi one in the chambers, the Chicago pair, uh, I was looking up online and this is during the time where the first one in the chamber, I think just dropped and I was curious just to see how it looked on foot and stuff. So I went on YouTube YouTube because I couldn't find it on Instagram. Not People weren't really posting it yet. And um, I went onto YouTube and I typed it in and he, the person that owns Lord Fubu, the, the actual owner, had a channel and he had a, a video review of the one in the chambers. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that's what I remember. Um, and then what happened was I, I watched that video. I was like, oh, this is tight and whatever. So I knew him from that. Uh, and then later I had saw his stuff on search feed here and there because I think right now it's kind of gaining popularity that people are taking new era caps and putting embroiders on it and kind of putting their own design on it which is I really like the idea some people are doing flames but in this case he's kind of really taking a more creative route and theming it per the city which which I like a lot um, but as far as the pieces go you guys all know me I mean I I like the Frisco hats, I like the A's caps, I probably, I don't know if I'm going to mess with any of the other teams because I, I pretty wear, you know, A's caps, white tees, <laughs> I need I need either an A's cap or a Frisco hat, right? So I mean, if I can, I'm going to show you some examples of kind of what he's done and some of the work that he's done. Highly recommend, go check him out. He is blowing up right now on Instagram, I mean, he's almost at like 50,000 followers. Uh, and even his YouTube then, I don't know if he still has his, uh, his videos up. But even his YouTube then was actually doing really well. The, the numbers were doing really well. 
but on Instagram now, homie is killing it. And he's also been selling out of pretty much everything. And last time I chatted with him, he also mentioned that he, d I'm pretty sure he does the embroidery himself. I don't think he actually sends it out to someone to get it done. I think he owns some of the machines himself. So if you like that DIY aspect to it, or if you like the owner, you know, creating the product for you and it kind of, I mean, it has a different feel sometimes to it. When, when you get a product and you know that the person that sold it to you actually made it themselves instead of just designed it and you know sent it off to someone else. If you like that, then this is something that you definitely got to check out. You know, the page is doing numbers, the hats look really good. If you're a hat person, it'll, it'll be right up your alley. Okay, so for the next brand, I think everybody has pretty much talked about this. Uh, and it's been majority of all positive words, and we're going to get into that in a second. But the next brand is going to be Sanjeev's brand. Shout out to Sanjeev. Um, he's a fellow YouTuber or someone that has been doing it longer than a majority of the people that are still on the platform right now. And kind of paved the way for some of us, if you ask me. Uh, but he happened to drop his, I guess, first official collection, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he got a cropped sweater and also some cargo, like a bondage uh, pants, I believe, and a couple of other pieces. They look really nice. They look like they're done really well. I like the idea of the crop sweater that is reversible. If I think one side has a graphic and then the other side doesn't. I don't, I'm not entirely sure how that works. And I'm not sure if it's sold out because I know I'm mentioning it as if you need to check it out so then you can buy it. But uh, hopefully he did sell out. And if he didn't, then go ahead and check out the links uh, in the description there. Now, as far as uh, feedback goes, I think a majority, if not 95% of the, the feedback has been very positive. And then I've seen some uh, reviews back on it on the High Fashion Talk Facebook page, group page. I got tagged in something and I was reading some of the comments. It's it's really funny, you know, fashion streetwear in, in, in this space that we're in. A lot of people are very quick to call something trash because of non-logical reasons a lot of the time. And you're, you're totally entitled to your opinion on what you don't like and what you like. But I was reading through some of the High Fashion Talk Facebook group page comments. Majority of the people that you know, were negative about it, and there were quite a few comments that were negative about it, they were like, oh, I don't support YouTube brands because X, Y, and Z. And the only YouTube brand that I support is Bare Knuckles, this and that, whoop de wop And I'll read it and I'm like, bro, like, are you only shutting this out because it's a YouTuber brand? And I know I'm, may, I may or may not be the person to speak about it because I'm biased because I am a YouTuber and I'm planning to do something in the future myself. But at the same time, if I were to just give an example, that's like, you know, because even for myself, I, I'm not really into TikTok. But let's just say someone from TikTok came out with a fire brand. Like, I'm talking about fire that I'm like, oh, I wholeheartedly, like, I believe in this. But I found out that he's from TikTok. I don't care. <laughs> I, why does that matter? Why, why does that? I just want, I'm, I'm looking for clothes that fits me and that I like. And maybe at a reasonable price if we can make that work too. That's what I'm looking for. I can give a, I can give a crap what the background uh, and how this person got to where they are to achieve what they did. Uh, unless it's something negative. Okay, that's, that's bad. But we're talking about social media. Do you know how normal social media is now? Do you know how normal YouTube is and, and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram? Like, why is it that people, I just, I'm, I'm asking the question back for those who don't support it. It's like, and I'm not saying you have to just because he is who he is, but to use YouTube as a crutch to say that I don't support it because it's YouTube or he, he came from YouTube, to, that, that's like wild to me. Like we live in 2020, like, I mean, half the people I know that make careers, like some of them, if not a lot of them have made their career on social media and I'm not going to bash them for it it's because that's the, that's the time period that we live in. So. I'm just a little lost on that, just entirely. I have so much more to say and maybe I'll save it for the Patreon. I'll probably make a whole separate video of that on the Patreon. But as it stands, do, do I even need to give a reaction to it? Obviously I'm talking about it and I, I, I love what Sanjeev has done over the years and I think he's done a great job with the collection that has come out. It really seems like he put a lot of effort into it um, and of course, that you know, his fan base is uh, definitely appreciative of it as well. And hopefully it's sold out. So if people want to share in the comments whether or not it did sell out or not, I'm not entirely sure. You feel me? So with that said, I think we should move on to the next brand. So 
So Free the Youth Ghana. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that last part correctly. This is a brand that's not from the US, it's from Ghana, from Africa. Um, I stumbled across this because I was on the Fashion Archives page, shout out to Ao. I was on his Instagram and he tagged a live, I believe, and then it brought me to YouTube. And then on YouTube, Virgil, Virgil Abloh and like I guess some other tastemakers that own previous brands or have been in the industry were all on a live together and they were talking about uh, up and coming brands in Africa and I was just I, I listened to it I was cutting my own hair and I was just kind of sat there and listened to the whole thing I think it was over an hour and a half or something like that I can't remember it was a pretty long video uh, but I, I, I got to sit down and listen to everything and one of the brands that kind of caught my attention was Free the Youth um, I think kind of looking through their page uh, some of the pieces that I thought was really cool was uh, the jean jacket and also the denim. I'm curious to see how that denim actually fits. And from what I heard on the live when they were speaking, they were saying that all the materials that they use for their brand are actually uh, from Africa. So I think there's either a jacket or the denim that has uh, not a leather patch, but it's like an alligator patch or some kind of gator or snake. That material is actually from Africa. So <laughs> it's like actual gator. <laughs> Real African gator. I don't. <laughs> I don't know what. Um, I don't know what skin specifically it is. It's a green color. That's kind of tight, bro. You know what I'm saying? About? Like you, you, people ask, like, bro, this is this is African snake skin, right? Boy, you, this is this is high quality shit. You feel me? Um, but obviously, if you go on the page, it's um, they're taking the the whole street approach. And I'm just excited to see what, what's to come from Africa itself uh, when it comes to fashion, when it comes to clothing. I think in conversation with the people that love designer clothing and even people that love designer slash uh, streetwear have now gotten conversation of that China and places like Africa may or may not come up on top in the next couple of years when it comes to streetwear. So this brand, from what I can see so far and some of the images that I'm showing you here, it definitely has potential and I would love to see uh, where it goes for the future. So for this next one, shout out to 88 Rising, shout out to the Higher Brothers. Um, there's two brands that are in the mix. There's Mr. Enjoy the Money by No No, and then there's A Few Good Kids by Maswe. Uh, I'm, hopefully I'm, I'm pronouncing his name right. Uh, but if anyone is like an 88 Rising fan or the Higher Brothers fan, if you guys don't know who Higher Brothers are, uh, they are the ones that made the song Made in China. They got way more hits than just Made in China though. They got they got some good hits. <laughs> they got they got some good hits. I, I fuck with the Higher Brothers. Heavy. Heavy. I've been listening to the Higher Brothers, you know what I mean? But these are the two brands that are coming from them. Mr. Enjoy the Money and A Few Good Kids. I'm not gonna say they have the same aesthetic. I think per piece some of them can look like a mix as far as the design goes. Um, but they're definitely, you know, two separate brands entirely. Some of the pieces that I, I saw that I actually like is the, the jeans that uh, A Few Good Kids is coming out with. It's kind of like these uh, light wash denim and it has their circular logo that says A Few Good Kids, kind of like an all over print. And I just like that. I mean, you guys know me, I like Evisu, so I, I like, you know, all over print on denim. But if I had to choose between the two, which I, I shouldn't because, you know, I think this fashion thing is more of a piece game. But if I were to choose between which brand I would rock with, you know, more than the other, it would definitely be a few good kids. This green jacket, man, this green jacket is hard. This green jacket go crazy, boy. I need me, a, I need, I need that and I need the pants, you know, because it's also in support of something that I listen to anyway. If you don't listen to the Higher Brothers, then I totally get it. Um, as far as the projection of the future of how these brands are going to do, I think they're just going to do really well. I mean, Higher Brothers at this point are, they're famous. They're, they're really famous. Not, not everybody knows about them, but they're, they're pretty up there as far as like, I guess you can categorize it as Asian rap or rap from China. I'd like to argue that Higher Brothers is one of the better sounding individuals out of 88 and Rising. Not everybody on 88 is, is that good. I mean, there, a lot of people on there are good, but Higher Brothers, for me anyway, personally, Boy, that shit hit. Some of those songs slap. You know what I mean? Okay, very quickly, uh, I know I'm wearing something different. Okay, because I was editing the footage and I was like, uh, I think I need to add in these two other brands. One is going to be So So Brothers. So So Brothers on Instagram. I don't know their exact handle. I'm sure I'm showing you right here though. Uh, and this 
is for pure denim lovers. And also it's for newbies too. If you are the type that haven't bought into raw denim before, I think this is a really great place to start as long as you know your measurements. And very quickly for those who don't know how to get their measurements for pants to send to a company like this to get it custom made, just take one of your favorite pair of pants, take the crotch measurement, the knee measurements, and then also the ankle opening. As long as you have those three, you're you're golden and if you want to go the extra mile get the thigh measurement as well and then i mean that's just cherry on top if you ask me but as long as you get those three you're you're in the ballpark as far as what you want to find and then you can hit up companies like this like social brothers most likely on their website uh i'm pretty sure they probably have a whole bunch of different fits you can check out if not you can send them your measurements and get it custom made how dope is that and the even better part about this brand is that out of any other raw denim brand that I've seen, they definitely do a lot more detailed work when it comes to some of the accessories that you get on your pants. If you even see some of these photos that I'm showing you right here, on the back of the pants, they'll have more details of like a better buckle uh, and just the way that it's cut out in denim just looks a lot better and way more unique than what you averagely see on other raw denims that are out there. So I highly recommend Go check out Soso Brothers. And then the other brand, as I'm just kind of segmenting through this, is going to be Rue Porter. This is not denim. These are blank uh, t-shirts and hoodies and maybe even some other items that I'm totally forgetting right now. Uh, but Rue Porter, very quickly, I talked about this super briefly on the blank t-shirts video that I made a couple weeks back. I had a lot of questions on it and just kind of tell you guys why I'm bringing this up. So Rue Porter is in replacement right now in popularity when it comes to using uh, Gildan blanks, all style blanks, Bella Canvas blanks. When people start their new streetwear brands, I've noticed in the past two years or this past year, 2020 especially, a lot of these brands are floating away from using Gildan. A lot of them are floating away from using all style and Bella Canvas and whatever the you know most popular blank brand names that are out there. The reason being is because those brands that have been around for so long, they always make uh, blanks that are they're just really regular fitting and they're not necessarily a boxy tailoring and I know boxy tailoring has just been extremely popular over the past years as of like 2017 till now a lot of brands do it okay but the unfortunate thing is that I'm not a lot of I guess you can say wholesale brands do it and Rue Porter does do wholesale so my assumption is that if you just have a reseller's license and then you hit them up you can get a cheaper price and since I know a lot of people that watch this aren't always just someone that wants to see other brands they actually are looking at some of these brands for inspiration and seeing how they do it because they want to start their own Rue Porter is a great place to start. I will say it's a little, not the word is, I don't know if it's saturated, but tons and tons and tons, if not 80% of the newer streetwear brands that I'm seeing right now, uh, currently on Instagram or wherever, are using Rue Porter blanks and they're just switching out the tags. And you can tell by the fabric that it's no secret that what they're doing, you know what I mean? Would I vouch for the quality? Yeah, I, I would definitely say you get your money's worth. Some of the items, if you only buy one, it can kind of get a little expensive, like $45 for a t-shirt or $40 somewhere around there. And then the hoodies kind of get a little bit up there too. The hoodies aren't as thick as they kind of look in the photos. I know that sounds really weird. Maybe I just kind of thought it was gonna be a very thick hoodie when I bought it. They're a little bit thinner. They, they kind of feel like French Terry, um, more like a towel than they do actually feel like a very beefy hoodie to kind of keep you warm, or in my experience, or for the one that I bought anyway. So boom, check them out, Rue Porter. Uh, you know what, actually, I'm just gonna end this video here. <laughs> I, ha I think I had one more. If I do, I'll, f I'll play it here, but if not, this is the end. And as per usual, since this is like episode seven, episode eight, and this is, we're continuing the series, the year is pretty much over. Try your best to put the brands that you really wanted me to mention uh, in this video in the comment section below. You know what I mean? Because um, I have been in a rut of finding new brands, maybe because of the pandemic, maybe a lot of people are, they don't have that much money to, you know, kind of kickstart their newer brands. As of late, I haven't found too many that's noteworthy or just kind of like for shock value kind of grabs my attention in 2020. So uh, if you got one, I would love to see them put their ads, put their websites. Uh, I want to see it all. So, so with all that was said today, I appreciate y'all. Oh, and for the people that are part of the Patreon, you guys already know what's up. I'm pretty sure I dropped the episode prior of the extension of this video on the patreon so if you want to go ahead and check that out there's a brand on there that i'm really 
I'm really like genuinely uh, pretty amped on that I mentioned on the Patreon. So it is what it is. It's your boy Keezy. It ain't easy being Keezy. I'll see you next time. Peace.